Good afternoon, grade 8. We need to continue with module 1. It's 1 to 2 for fourth quarter. We actually stopped in the non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance, correct? Correct? Was it in non-Mendelian? I think so. Okay. Non-Mendelian patterns of inheritance. According to Igor Mendel, the genotype of an individual organism consists of structures called factors, which are now called genes, right? Genotype, genome, or the genes, okay? These factors control the inheritance of the characters and are present in pairs of contrasting characteristics, okay? By the way, Gregor Mendel is the father of modern genetics. He actually, he actually discovered these patterns of inheritance. And he studied peace. He's actually a priest. He studied the, a, a, the, the peace in their garden and find out that there is a mixture of genes. There is something that is actually transferred to the offspring. These factors separate the ore segregate during the formation of gametes or meiosis. Okay? Hence, each gamete receives only one factor from every pair of factors. They are independently passed on from one generation to another, and the inheritance of one character does not influence that of the other. Just like, for example, if you have a... a, a gene for tall, it will not affect the gene for the color of the eyes, for example, or the color of the skin. Okay? However, scientists observe that some characters do not segregate according to Mendel's principles. The expression of some characters can be altered by the influence of other factors. These observations led scientists to formulate principles of heredity that are not Mendelian in nature, okay? Let's take a look at what are these non-Mendelian in nature or non-Mendelian inheritance. Number one is the incomplete dominance, okay? It is a pattern of inheritance in which one allele or one set of gene for a specific character is incompletely dominant over the other allele, resulting to another phenotype in which the expressed Physical character is a combination of a dominant and recessive phenotype. By the way, did I discuss genotype and phenotype? I don't think we did. Oh, wait. Oh, yes, you did, sir. We did? Oh, wait. Genotype and phenotype. When you say genotype, this is actually in the genes, okay? The actual set of genes that you inherit from your parents. Phenotype, these are the expressions. When you say expressions, these are the one you can observe or highly observable. Like for example, the color of your skin is highly observable because you can see it, right? The color of your hair, the color of your eyes, what else? Tall, short, those are highly observable. So those are phenotypes. Okay? Expressed physical character is in combination of a dominant and recessive phenotype. Dominant means dominant over the other. Okay? Like for example, Filipinos are more dominant with black iris color with eyes compared to brown and blue. Okay? That's in the Filipino. But if the Filipino would be mixed with other um, other nationality, tendency is it will become hybrid or there's a mixture now of different genes from foreign to a Filipino. Hence, you can actually have a what? A typical foreign looking. Simply because foreign looking is dominant over the Filipino blood. Let's move forward. Genotype. Okay. Genotype is an organism's complete set of heritable genes. It is in the genes, okay? Genotype. Or genes that can be passed down from parents 
to the offspring. To those are genotypes. Okay? Phenotypes. Okay. Phenotype refers to the observable physical characteristic or properties okay, of an organism. This include the organism's appearance, development, and behavior. Those are observable. Meaning to say, if it is observable, therefore, these are considered as phenotypes. Okay? If it is in the genes, like for example, is actually carrying the genes for short, but he is tall. That is actually one genotype. Okay? Carrying a short gene, but he is tall. Taas siya, pero carrier of the genes for short. Those are example of genotype or phenotype. Taas siya. Whether he is carrying the genes for short or tall, as you can see, physically he is tall. He has brown skin. He has blue eyes. So those are phenotypes. Okay. Let's move forward with homozygous. The homo means one, right? So homozygous is a genetic condition where an individual inherits the same alleles for a particular gene from both parents. Like for example, these are considered pure. Like for example, the expression T and T, capital T and capital T, it means tall. Okay? Both parents, the, the individual there, or the organism there receives a tall expression or tall gene from both parents. Hence, you will have now a pure tall or homozygous tall. How about heterozygous? Hetero means many. Okay? Having two different alleles of a particular gene or genes. It is considered as mixed. Are you still with me? Are you still with me, grade 8? Yes, sir. Okay. Hence, the expression, capital T and capital, or small letter T, rather. So, it is a mix. Mixture of a tall gene and a short gene. Okay. The, the individual there or the organism there is carrying the genes for short. But tall there is dominant over short. Question so far? None, sir. Let's move forward. Punnett square. Okay. Punnett square is a square diagram that is used to predict the genotypes of a particular cross or breeding experiment. It is named after the after Reginald C. Punnett, who devised the approach. The diagram is used by biologists, including us, to determine the probability of an offspring having a particular genotype. So later on, we will have the actual um usage of a Punnett square. Punnett square or the Punnett square is a tabular summary of possible combinations of maternal alleles with paternal alleles. Okay. Per, uh, the, the, the allele or the genes of your parents, both male and female. The maternal is for female. Paternal is for father or male. These tables can be used to examine the genotypical outcome probabilities of the offspring of a single trait or allele or when crossing multiple traits from the parents. Codominance. Codominance is a, con is a combination of inheritance in which two different alleles of or for a genetic characteristic are equally expressed. Generally, each individual receives one version of a gene called allele from each parent. Okay? It is distributed equally. Okay? It, is, it has equal distribution among 
the genes for uh, from your parents, both male and female. If alleles are heterozygous or different, the dominant allele is generally expressed while the expression of the other allele, which is recessive, is concealed. Meaning to say, the one that is dominant will usually appear. Okay? But it doesn't mean that that organism is not carrying the recessive gene. Still, that organism is carrying the recessive gene. However, in codominance, neither allele is recessive and the phenotypes of both alleles are expressed. Let's have the example later. Sex determination in humans. Sex chromosomes are classified as X and Y. Are you familiar with this? X and Y? Are you yes, sir. I can only hear Abby. How about others? EM and Vincent. Yes, sir. Vincent Kyle. Vincent Kyle. Yes, okay. A human being is composed of 23 pairs of chromosomes. 23 pairs. Since it is pairs, how many, how many chromosomes do we have all in all? We have, how many chromosomes do we have? Since it is 23 pairs, we have how many chromosomes per day? Since we have 23 pairs of chromosomes? 46, sir. 46, correct. We have 46 all in all chromosomes, okay? 22 pairs of the chromosomes are called autosomes, okay, autosomes, which are non-sex determining chromosome, meaning to say that it actually carries the characteristic, okay, the physical characteristic, the, the body belt, what else, the color of your skin, eyes, nose, and all of those, while one pair is called gonosome. This is the sex determinant chromosome. This will give us an idea if that organism is male or female. Okay. Sex chromosomes are distinct chromosomes that they are involved, that are involved in determining sex of an organism. Okay. Females have two X chromosomes or XX, hence the expression XX. Whereas males have one X chromosome and one Y chromosomes. Hence, the expression X and Y. Again, for females, it's XX. For, fem for male, it's XY. Female XX, male XY. During meiosis, the male XY sex chromosome pair separate gametes or sperms, okay? It will actually pair with sperms. Half of the male gametes produced contains the X chromosome and the other half contains the Y chromosome. So, therefore, the, the, the determinant of if an offspring is the male. Sure. Why do you think so? Why do you say so? Remember that female is XX, okay? Even though we can have now um, the genetic engineering, we can have also surrogate motherhood, and even in vector fertilization, IVF, are you familiar with in vector fertilization? The test tube babies, have you heard about it? No, sir. Okay. In the technology, as technology arises, the development also uh, to improve humanity arises. Like for example, we have the in vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization happens when the union of sperms and egg actually performs outside the womb or in the test tube, actually in the petri dish. Okay, once successful, it will be inserted 
to what? To the surrogate mother or the one that will nurture the offspring. Okay, what, what is now the, the, the implication? So those that um, cannot actually bear a child can, can bear a child. Or those who wants to have their genes attached, who wants to have their genes intact, can can actually make so. Okay, or those who have same sex, actually relationship can have or can bear a child. That's the implication. Okay, even though we have the in vitro fertilization. But still, the, the, the determinant there is the male. Remember that females are XX. Even though if they will just get the um, a somatic cell complete or diploid number of chromosomes, remove the, um, the genes from the egg and replace it with a diploid, still, if it is female, the result will be always female. Okay? But if they will use sperm, sperm actually will separate into two, the X and the Y. So if the female will be paired with another X, it will become female. But if the female is paired with a Y chromosome, it will become male so the determinant there is the male or the father did you get the point grade eight yes sir. did you get the point are you sure nasab tanra grade eight yes sir Eh, sayang kayo, magsitag yaw yun, hindi masabtan. Okay, akong binisay on. Babay is XX. Listen kay ba, dito masabtan. <laughs> magsitag yaw yaw din rin, no? Sayang kayo kong laway. Okay. Babay is XX. Lalaki is XY. So, ang determinant, kung imong imix, or kung, kung, um, kung atong i-pair, Ang babae o lalaki, the determinant there is not the female, it's the male. Nga naman, kay si female, duha na ka-X ang naani niya. So if you're going to separate the, the genes for female, it is X and X. So it is always female. Okay? So the determinant there is the male. Nga naman, si, si male... Na I X and na I Y. Okay? During um, mitosis or during the, the, the mating and production or, or shall we say, um, shall we say formation of zygote or formation, formation of, let's have the other term, make it more simple, formation of um, the child no? If you have now the child, they actually share these genes. So, muhatag si female o X. So, good. Si male, it's either X or Y to create a zygote. So, the determinant there is the male. So, it's wrong na um, to... That the female is the determinant. No, the determinant there is the male because male contains X and contains Y. Did you get the point? Where's Robbie? Connection problems, sir. Okay, let's continue. Since females have two X chromosomes, all female gametes or eggs have only one X chromosome. An egg fertilized but not by an X carrying sperm develops into female, the one that I discussed a while ago. 
whereas an egg fertilized by a Y carrying sperm develops into male. This is the reason why Chinese really are really happy to have a child which is male. Because it's it is really hard um, before to have male. That is also the reason why um, the population of female is more dominant than the population of um, male. Again, the population of female is more dominant than the population of male. Mas daghan ang babae kaysa lalaki. That's the reason. Because, again, female is carrying X and X, while male is carrying X and Y. Okay? Let's move forward. Okay, this is now the sex determinant or determination in humans. Okay? X and X, Y and Y. Okay? X, Y, X, Y. 50, 50. 50 male, 50 female. Sex link genes. So there are genes that are they're actually linked with a particular sexes. Like for example, sex link genes are located on the X and Y chromosome. Because they are actually located on X and Y chromosome, therefore, it may affect either female or male. Okay? If the gene is located on the Y chromosome, it is called the y link gene. These genes can only be inherited by males because generally males have X and Y genotype and females do not have Y sex chromosome. This is the reason why that um, usually baldness is associated, baldness ba opaw, is associated with male, lucky, female, male, Y. Because it is located, the gene, it is considered as the Y-link gene. The gene is located on the Y-link or Y chromosome. That's the reason. Okay. Sad to say that um, breast cancer usually occurs in female because oncogenes or the, the inactivated cancer cells are actually, or the genes for that are actually located in the X chromosome. Okay. It is considered as the X link gene. Sure, there are some males that actually develop. Uh, breast cancer. Yes, there are some males that also develop breast cancer. It depends upon. Okay? But usually, in cancer, um, most of the male experience or later part of their life exper experience the um, cancer in the uh, in the gonads area. Okay, because these are actually located or the genes there is located in the Y or Y-link gene. Okay. On the other hand, if the gene is located on the X chromosome, it is called the X-link gene. This gene can only be inherited in both males and females. Just like what I discussed a while ago. One allele is normally dominant and the other is recessive. Since genes for character may have two alleles to form a gene, or they need to have a two alleles to form a gene, it's either a, a, a pure, which is homozygous, or a mixed, which is heterozygous. In humans and other organisms, hereditary traits are generally passed on somatic cell. Somatic cell means diploid or 2N or complete set of chromosomes via DNA during mitosis. Remember the mitosis? However, some characteristics are passed on through X and Y chromosome. Okay? These are the, the one that we had discussed a while ago, the sex link traits or characteristics. These traits are known as sex link traits 
and they are only frequently expressed on one sex, either male or female. Sex-linked traits refer to the heritable characteristic that inherited through the sex chromosome, X or Y. Okay. These traits, like for example in female, female's body is different from male, correct? This is because of the of the sex linked traits. Okay. Female's body is more in curve and male's body is different. It's more on muscle. Okay. Here comes the word masculinity. Femininity and masculinity. So these are six link traits. Okay. Let's move now to monohybrid crosses or monohybrid cross. Monohybrid cross is a cross between two organisms with different variations at one genetic chromosome of interests. Okay. Just like this one. Okay, this is one example of a monohybrid cross. Okay, as what you can see, you can actually have the G there stands for green, dominant green, and recessive, small letter G, it's yellow. So, we actually, this is now the Punnett square, right? We're actually using now the Punnett square by original Punnett, we cross a female dominant or female, what do you call this one? Homozygous green to a male, what? Yellow. Okay. To a male, to, to a, a male yellow. So if you're going to cross that one, the female will give the dominant green followed by the male with recessive yellow. And this is now called what? We already have four green pea plants. Okay. If you're going to look at the genotypic ratio in the genes, you can actually see two genes there, right? The gene for green and the gene for yellow. Since it is a mixture of two genes, it is called heterozygous green. Okay? So if you're going to look at the genotypic ratio, this is 100% heterozygous green. Okay? How about phenotypic ratio? Since it is phenotypic, when say phenotypic, phenotypes, the one that you can observe. The one that you can observe is the dominant over the recessive. The dominant there is green. So therefore, these are all green. Okay. And again, the expression is scattered all throughout entirely in the set of offspring with a hundred percent okay or 50 50 rather 50 percent green and 50 percent yellow so nakatagta ng genes equally again what do you call the equal distribution of genes grade eight the equal distribution of genes you know topic ratio no the equal distribution oh, wait, no. of, we have incomplete dominance how about the other one the incomplete dominance, it is not actually spread all throughout the offspring but in this case if you're going to look at it it's 100 percent. it is actually mixed okay the pure is being mixed with the yellow 100 percent. so what do you call that phenomena If dominant, huh? No. What do you call that phenomena? Dominant. Oh, wait. We have incomplete dominance and 
What is the other one? Complete dominance. Complete dominance? So, huh? Yes. It is not complete. Oh, co-dominance. It is co-dominance. Diba, I am telling you that we will yes. example with the co-dominance. This is one of the good examples of the co-dominance. Yeah. Things there or the genetic characteristics are equally expressed. If you're going to look at it, the genes there are equally expressed. That na scatter all throughout the offspring. These are the offspring now. Okay, these are the results from the breeding of a green pea and a yellow pea pea plants. Okay, so the results are heterozygous. If you're going to look at the genotypic uh, genotype of that certain organism, it is all heterozygous green, or all actually receives what the dominant green and the recessive mm -hmm. okay but if you're going to look at the phenotype these are all green no other color why because all of them receives the dominant allele green that's the reason okay let's have more example by next meeting do you have any question answer all right I think that's all for today, class. If you have questions, please raise it in our GC. I'll be more than happy to help you with your question. And okay, sir. Um, with particular examples, I will give more examples by next meeting, hopefully, because we'll be also talking about dihybrid. From monohybrid, we need to move up to dihybrid or the mixture of two or more genetic characteristics. Right. I think that we're over today, class. Thank you for your participation. EM, Vincent, and Ravi. Have a nice day, everyone. Goodbye. Bye, sir.